Welcome to TMS Insights late in the month of April, but Ben Clark and Jeremy Hook ready to bring you an update of everything that's been happening and a few thoughts about what we can see coming up. Ben, the quarter ended was a good quarter. I mean, the recovery of the COVID uh, markets environment has continued in the March quarter. The index was up about 4.5%, so broad contribution. But when you broke it down, there was that key thematic of the growth to value switch going on. Absolutely. Um, And I think that sort of further split where some growth stocks are trading back to all-time highs and some are really lagging, Mm. and you can further break that down by, you know, your REAs and your SEEKs have got this massive wise tech, massive tailwind from COVID in some ways. And then you've got some growth stocks which are, you know, operating in America and places like that which have had this wave of COVID and they're experiencing a lot of issues as a Mm. result of it. That's holding the earnings growth back and that's seen the share prices, you know, sort of not have the run. So um, there's still a lot of COVID knock-on effects um, occurring through the market. It's still having an impact, I think, on virtually every business, positively or negatively. And I think, you know, the market's really now trying to work out for the ones that have taken a hit from COVID, what does the earnings recovery look like? You know, what's the time scale of it and how fast will it happen? And for the ones that got the benefit, because we have seen quite a few now, you know, come out with some not so great numbers after some awesome numbers last year, what does the normalisation of those earnings look like? Um, so it's a moving feast. Yeah, and it makes it um, now it's in that stage where I think people like to have, speaking about and with and to the major fund managers, mm-hmm. they like to have their, their, their baskets spread pretty broadly to, yeah. to capture what's going on because... Yeah. It is one of those times when it is more more difficult to be too precise on those key thematic big issues. Yeah. But one of the things we know about, we've got that continuous setting of the low interest rates, which is healthy for the share market overall. Yeah. It's also challenging for the yield-based cash environment. It certainly is. Um, you know, the RBA, um, despite the movement in the bond market we saw in the in the first few months of this year, is adamant that they won't be lifting rates until 2024. Um, that's, you know, obviously still some time off, and I don't think they'll be lifting too quickly when they do get to that stage. So, you know, it's a question we're getting often is, um, you know, I think everyone's looking at cash returns and sort of thinking, what do we do? It's mm. a frequent discussion. And, um probably prompted us to do a lot more work into areas that we, you know, have, have, we're well across, but we haven't yeah. looked at as closely in the past. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, um, you know, that's thrown up some maybe some opportunities we can have a chat about. Some good opportunities too. And, and just to maybe deal with something which could be a, an issue that people think about, the, the idea that rates will go up at some stage is, is worrying when you look at yield-based investments sometimes. Mm. But to give a bit of clarity about that statement you just made, 2024, three years. I don't remember a period of time ever in my career where I've heard the RBA make such a long-term yeah. statement. Yeah. Three years in our markets is a lifetime. Yeah. And and, and I'm three, not, months is. <laughs> three months. So I, I will be worried about 2025. Yeah. But I'm not going to be worrying about it because I've got this thematic till 2024 that yeah. I'm pretty much basing everything on. And it's safe to do that. It's not bulletproof. It's not the only way. Mm. But what we're talking about now in terms of that thematic mm. is something you can reliably invest around. Yeah. And, yeah, I, I, I don't think you could be signposted any better um, that that is going to be the case. And it is also worth remembering that actually when you look at um, those initial, when, when rates do start moving higher, it's actually a period where equity markets typically are very strong yeah. because it, it normally means that economic growth is trending above where the central bank would like it to mm. be and therefore they're just having to pull the economy back a little bit. But that's normally very good for earnings um, in the in the, in the across the market. So it's an interesting period. And, um, you know, with the vaccine and the reopening and all of that stuff on top of it adds another layer. So talking about yield, and I mean, everybody's aware of how miserably low the cash rates are and term deposits and the like, but the share market and other areas we can talk about, there are pockets of yield which are really quite generous. And, yeah. you know, I don't know if everybody's quite aware of this. And if we maybe talk initially about the share market and then talk about what's um, available in peripheral and associated areas and different asset classes, um, we're going to give people a bit of a sense of what they can be talking to their advisor about to make sure that they're not missing out on 
yield where it is actually available. Yeah, and I, I think that's, um, you know, it's a, a conversation we couldn't have last year when rates really did go to zero because most companies, um, you know, battened down the hatches and didn't pay a dividend even if in hindsight they, you know, completely had the ability to do so. They just CEOs didn't know what was going to be in front of them. And um, this year, as we're seeing a, you know, sort of a normalisation across the market, it most companies will open the purse strings and pay dividends. It might not be at the rates that we were expecting in 2020. Um, it might be that there's a ramp up of those dividends again over the next few years. It'll depend business by business as mm. to how confident they are in the future. But certainly this year, you know, there was a dividend strike last year. Yep. Um, clients got a much lower income number than they would have been expecting. But this year we should be getting back to those. Dividends are back in town, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. So let's go into a, a couple of areas. On the infrastructure or toll road space specifically, something like Transurban pays 3.6%. That's a lot above cash. But what about Atlas Arteria, current rate of 5.8%? To rise again next year. Yeah, I mean, this I, this has been a favourite of mine. I might have spoken about it on the video. So Atlas was actually spun out of Transurban um, a number of years ago. It was actually post spinning out. It actually outperformed Transurban over time. It owned, its largest asset is the um, the highway that connects Paris to Lyon in the south of France. And um, you know that has been um, had issues with you know lockdowns across France. Um, France last. Uh, week announced that they're going to start lifting the, the re travel restrictions. Importantly, um, the EU um, two nights ago announced that it's going to allow vaccinated Americans to freely travel across Europe. Uh, so it, it's hard to see it here because we're in a very different state to the rest of the world, but travel is going to start to resume quite rapidly in 2021. 20, um, and, um, you know, this road is a phenomenal asset. Um, it, it's got a lot of commuter traffic, but it's also um, open to tourism-related traffic. And what I like about Atlas is not just the attractive yield this year, but the rapid, it's, you know, it's going to go into the sevens yeah, over the next couple of years after that. Yeah, it'll rise in 2023. So um, the numbers we are giving are 22 numbers so yep. for next year because that's the important one we look at. Yeah. Um, the, the, the resources space. Yeah. Um, Big yield. I mean, if you're holding BHP or Rio, um, Rio's forecast dividend is 5.9% fully franked. Yeah. I mean, these are mega dividends. Huge. And, and I think we could throw Fortescue in there yep. and we could throw Deterra that we've spoken yeah. about in there in as well. Meeting, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, of course, you know, you, um, always dependent on um, resource prices. Uh, definitely. But what I would say in these companies' favour is that most of the analysts are still using an iron ore or a copper price assumption that's well under where the actual price is trading at the moment. Mm. So, you know, the numbers we're giving, they're probably going to be a bit stronger yeah. because iron ore is currently 185, say, and a Macquarie analyst might be using a 160 price to yeah. um, to work out what the yield's going to be next year. Or I, I think they're even much more conservative than that. Yeah. So you kind of say there's probably some upside risk to mm. the, the dividends that are forecast. In the mining services space broadly, something like Orica paying 40, 4%. That's 40% would be good. That would be high. <laughs> that's about 30%, Frank. Um, or, or Horizon, which is... 8.2%, 70% frank. Not exactly ideal for everybody in every, in maybe in big leaks, but a portfolio can certainly have stocks like this in size, in the right yep. size. So yep. um, these are things that people are going to be conscious of if they can add this kind of stock to their portfolio. It takes a bit of pressure off the low rate on cash. So yep. they can afford to keep a bit of cash. Um, we mentioned infrastructure, APA, that's a good yep. one, 5.4%. Yep. I think you've got APA and Spark, Spark Infrastructure were two companies that actually paid their dividends last year, very few. Yeah. And although there's not a lot of growth in Spark's yield, it's it's high, um, you know, and I think it's in the high fives. Yep. And APA lower but growing. Um, Transurban, you know, I, I think the airport's, um, a great buys in that yep. you're probably not going to get a great yield next year, but in 23, 24, I think you'll look back based on what you're paying now and you'll think, I locked in a great yield. So the yield on Sydney Airport is expected to be 4% next year and 5 the year after. So that, that's pretty good. Yeah. Ben, just to change tax quickly, um, non-equities, you know, um, bonds and the like, there's two ways. You can buy direct bonds. We can access that through somebody like FIG 
or there are some really good ETFs yeah. that people can buy and get some really good safe investments with good yield. Yeah, I, I, and this is this is one of the areas I was sort of talking about earlier. So there's there's now a lot more choice on the market um, with ETFs in terms of what you can invest in. So you know, I'll give an example. One example would be great. Um, yeah. RSM, which is um, which is a, a, a an ETF that invests in state government bonds. Mm-hmm. So these are bonds issued by New South Wales, Victoria, West Australia, etc. Um, normally, if you just wanted to go and buy these bonds yourself, um, one bond is five hundred thousand Australian dollars. So you, you know, retail investors generally don't have access to this money. An ETF allows you to invest in a basket of these bonds, and you can buy one share of this ETF for about twenty-one dollars on the market. Mm-hmm. Just to give you an example, during COVID, um, when the market fell 38 40 percent. These bonds fell, you know, I think about thirty or forty cents. So they're one percent, one percent. So they're, you know, completely uncorrelated to markets. Yeah. Now, in this case, you know, you're looking at a yield of about two point three, two point four percent, and you can. There's a whole lot of other options. You can go into corporate bonds, government bonds, um, international bonds. There's something for everyone. And the one you mentioned is state government debt. So it's high quality debt. It's triple A rated or double yep. A rated and, and it's going to be there for a long time. So investment grade, absolutely. It's a good place to enhance your yield. Yeah, and I, I think the starting point is to, you know, to speak to your advisor about what sort of return you're looking to generate. Um, and the required um, risk level. And the required that, risk yeah. and working backwards and yeah. sort of working out what does a portfolio look like with a number of these options right. across it. And property is another area Correct. that um, is paying the good yields. Good yielding because they're recovering, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. Yep. so something to be considered. And that's a, a, a bit of a snapshot, some ideas to go back to your advisor and ask about yield, which is uh, certainly some generous areas. Next, we're going to bring you in a, you know, in a little over a week's time an update on the international reporting season from US stocks, which uh, is just underway at the moment. But that's all we've got time for today.